my name is the uh, Choi and the, I'm the, uh, uh, the uh, PI of the air quality in a forecasting group and our group uh, consists of uh, three different uh, sub team. The first team is the data simulation and second team is the uh, model, uh, numerical model development team and third one is the you know, AI team. Actually, uh, over three years ago, uh, three and a half years ago, AI team just, we just started in you know, two PhD graduate students. Uh, so right now, the, um, the you know, one of the largest you know, in the team of my groups, and I just, yeah, the, one of my initiation, this is Korean, and the, actually, the, I just you know, found the, uh, this one from a you know, website, and actually three and a half years ago, uh, in a Korean, you know, Go player, you know, whose name is Sado Lee, you know, you know, had a kind of a five time games, you know, against the you know, Alpago. Alpago is the, uh, uh, which is one of, you know, the learning, the uh, model, and the, which is the uh, re reinforcement one. And, and before the, you know, you know you know, game started, and I thought it definitely in you know, a suddenly probably won against Alpago about four to one or five point zero. That's my guess because I understand how the you know, the uh, this you know go game goes. This is a very different from the just you know in American chess, more complicated and very very different. Like you know like the uh, different I got cases the for the you know each. You know, in a moment, so that's why definitely the human being is still is the you know dominantly like you know, defeated the you know alpago machine. But anyway, the you know alpago is the you know defeated and settled Lee and a four to one. So that's why I shocked. So, and I shocked, and next morning, and the uh, I just you know put all my you know group members that uh, you know get uh, you know you know to volunteer to start yeah. to the okay. like a uh, deep learning study since that time just you know introduce the introduce the my uh, you know you know for like the uh, phd students you know or you know working for the ai and even though one person is a doctor in you know, Lee, actually he got like a phd uh, uh, from the uh, data science, and he has been working at a Samsung uh, more than uh, ten years, and uh, as a uh, big data and a scientist, actually he in a lead in a develop of the uh, you know big CV like a uh, in a in a AI assistance you know for the uh, Galaxy phone, and he just uh, joined, and right now is uh, the the uh, one you know two step and three and a PhD students are working for the you know, our you know, AI works right now, and machine learning and the atomic science they have a common. The both use a system approach and they subsequent interact each other and they adaptively evolve and they both you know you know have a, you know data problem. So this is one example and a very simple you know machine learning. You know how the you know, machine learning works, and probably, hopefully, and you know most of you understand you know, you know what the machine learning is. But you know one more time, just briefly introduce what that is. And machine you know learning, you know first to put the, uh, some hypothesis, and then uh, do uh, some performance, and then get some feedback. Okay, the value is good or bad or something. Okay, A is not, and you know try to the B, and what is the B? B is the uh, reasonable enough, and then probably trying to you know, get to the another you know, similar solution C, similar to B. So this is a very like about you know by using a Python about uh, 20 you know 30 very you know, simple line coding trying to you know, make the you know, how you know machine to you know get those solution. So uh, many of you guys, of course, in here is so like in you know, a super computing center in here. You guys know, you know, better than, you know, I do. But anyway, the, uh, if we have, you know, big data, then, you know, we can deal with the uh, deep learning. And basically, the artificial intelligence, very, you know, broad concept. And then the, the some portion of AI, and you're going to have a machine learning. And then some portion of machine learning, you know, we can get a deep learning. Okay? 
So deep learning is basically more or less a deeply, you know, known and something. Okay, so that's why it's deep learning code. So as long as we have a big data, and then we can do, you know, you, we, we can apply the uh, deep learning algorithm. So uh, more, you know, specifically, uh, what's the difference? What could be the difference between machine learning and deep learning? And for our like in exercise, for example, like uh, if you have to be a car, then machine just doesn't recognize this as a car. Believe it or not, you guys, you know, most of you guys, you are very good in a machine. So very easily, if you see that this, you know, image at all, then you just easily think, so, okay, this is a car. However, machine doesn't, you know, think in the way. So uh, first of all, and the, uh, you know, few you know, feature, and it should be uh, extracted. For example, for in order to become a car, you should have a belt and sometimes a window, and also this is made of all the uh, steel or something. So, uh, based on this you know, feature extraction, in the beginning of the uh, machine learning you know, period, people do the uh, classification, and they are gonna finally, they're gonna the, the machine thinks, okay, this is a car or not. But right now, even like of this, you know, feature, the uh, extracting the important feature for uh, some specific, you know, category or kind or number, they just uh, do to do the uh, deep learning, you know, machine itself. Let the machine, you know, understand what is the important feature, and and then uh, to do the, this classification, and the machine, you know, finally deep learning think this is a car or not. Okay, so uh. Deep learning you know, have been used many different ways to. The first one is to uh, focus in a weather and hurricane, and also uh, predict air quality and uh, do uh, some indoor air pollution, and and also uh, sometimes do to uh, identify the significance of prediction in an ozone and the PM forecasting. What that means is, for example, uh, tomorrow. Or two days later, ozone is very high, or PM 2.5 concentration is very, very high. And then, and actually, we do like a, what is the important factor would be? You know, this could be weather or anthropogenic emission, or from car, or like industry or something. So, and also, we do apply to a predict the extreme climate pattern and the uh, climate event. And, and also we discover the spatial and temporal pattern and climate and pollution data. So basically uh, this one, this, this one is actually used the on supervisor learning. And the, uh, this in you know, order to more or less the uh, supervisor learning. Okay. So in a red color is the, uh, you know, by my groups and the Half of the uh, publication already done, and a couple of them in the uh, in the middle of you know, revision right now. Okay, so uh, I just in explain to you about the deep neural network in a TNN basically. This is a very routine uh, routine uh, application for the you know deep learning, and the, uh, which is called like a deep neural network TNN, and basically. You are going to have this kind of uh, it's a, you know so laid it in the face, and then this you know machine this algorithm has the many different hidden layer. I just only you know showing three in you know, a hidden layer. This can be five or ten or twenty or something. So it depends on the uh, what kind of uh, study, what kind of uh, you know input, how much input data is uh, the available. You can make the different number of hidden layer or different number of neurons you can do. But in here, basically, if you have, a, for example, three different hidden layer, then first, the first hidden layer is the edges, more or less, more or less the edges in extract, and second hidden layer, actually, the uh, extract the combination of the edges. So that's how this, ed you know, you have to have the eyes, you know, ears, nose, or something like that, right? And then finally, combination of a combination of edges, and then you're gonna have a, this kind of a, a face in the end. So once you get to this in you know, a face, okay, this is you know actually not a Einstein, actually one like a you know, beautiful ladies in you know, a face. That's how you know just a machine just understand. 
exactly this one is exactly you know, applied to the uh, for the prediction of air pollution. So what would be the air input for the you know, air pollution prediction? And some input like a meteorology and some air quality information, which is called like you know, precursor for ozone or PM something, and then uh, some emission. Okay, but in our cases. We, our exercise of this input variable over the previous days. For example, last one weeks, last in you know, previous one week, last you know one weeks, the uh, if you know, the, you know how this is all the input, and then output will be a uh, target will be future, okay? Tomorrow and today later, or about the next one week, or sometimes the uh, two weeks. You know, our guru is the uh, right now one of my students is writing paper. You know, for the you know long kind of a uh, you know, prediction of the you know air pollutants, you know concentration of air pollutants, and it's so one of the very interesting. You know, you know I'm the numerical modeler, so I'm weather. Uh, I'm very familiar with weather model, air pollution model. But sometimes for the forecasting for about like the three days later, then the accuracy of the uh, forecasting system very rapidly dropping. However, if we use the machine learning, then machine doesn't have those kind of fear. So, you know, from our exercise, our learning, sometimes even one week later, that accuracy is still very reasonably maintained. This is a totally different. Number one, big difference. And number two, different, of course, this machine, machine learning forecasting doesn't take that much time. For our case, like about, you know, just a uh, you know, couple of minute range. But if you just forecast two days or three days, you know, weather and air pollution forecasting, and then at least like you, you, you need to very distant like cluster and at least like uh, more than 200 or 300 cluster, you should, you know, you should learn those models like about, you know, four or five you know, hours or something. So, okay, so uh, that's the you know, difference. So basically first layer is a seasonal canister layer and second is a biweekly and hourly something. Temporarily, like, you know, each different like layers, there will be the uh, different temporal, you know, pattern they just, you know, catches. Or it could be kind of, you know, opposite from, you know, short time to a you know, long time. So, uh, for our you know, you know, purpose, particularly we are using convolution in a neural net, not just in a typical in a routinely used the DNA. The one of the reason is by using convolution layer, we found that in, in a limited number of the input data still very reasonably you know, the, uh, you know, captures the you know, more or less the uh, important you know, features and predict uh, pollution. Most of the time, I saw, I saw the, like you know, commercial sites and CNN you know, is being used for you know, image, the treatment for the image. But you know, we are using this CNN for the regression method. I think this is a very you know, unique thing is how you know, group is you know, working in the way. So anyway, the meteorology of quality and emission and the uh, previous you know, days, and we are gonna do through the you know, few convolution layer, and then finally, we are going to get the fully connected layer, and then we predict the uh, in air pollution. Okay, this is an you know, example, Ozone in Texas, and this is uh, my you know, hometown. And then this is a uh, uh, TCQ, you know, camps, that's the you know, measurement size. And this measurement size, you know, provides uh, some meteorology data, and also some, you know, chemical concentration data. So, for example, in the last, you know, five days, in a historical you know, value putting in here as an input, and then the uh, tomorrow or uh, in a few days you know, ahead, the hourly predict is ozone and PM. And by setting up like this, and then the, we train the deep neural network until this you know, DNA and you know, this you know, CNN model you know, reasonably well you know, captures the. Uh, in a real time hour prediction, you know. So we just do, we train the three years in here, but of course we can use, like, you know, for over the United States, we can do, you know, more long years, in 10 years or 20 or 30 years, then 
this GNN machines become smarter and smarter because more experience. So, but well, for Ozone and from our in exercise two years enough, and then uh, we just the uh, validate the purpose uh, for the 2017. We do in our next uh, forecast. Okay, this one is the uh, this one is the uh, you know the uh, result. Y axis is Ozone concentration. Okay. And access is the uh, month, you know, January to uh, December. So red color represents the you know object, object with ozone concentration, and you know gray and black color it represents the AI model result. So you can see that in Houston, particularly in June, July, the ozone is uh, low, relatively low than other months because we have a very clean air, you know, flows from the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, so exactly the uh, the AI model is captured, and also we do you know check the how you know in terms of accuracy we are using the uh, index of you know uh, index of you know agreement IOA and IOA we are using, and basically IOA is consider correlation questions and also mean bias together. If we just only consider correlation questions, sometimes correlation questions is pretty high. However, in terms of mean bias, there's a lot of you know, bias, then that's not good. So that's why we are using uh, the uh, IOA for the inaccuracy in the index. And uh, in a summer days, and this is a January and March, and the, uh, this is a December, and the 70% uh, to and 100% accuracy. During summer, we more or less the the accuracy range is about in you know, eighty five percent to ninety percent. This one is you know it's a higher than a numerical model, sometimes five or ten percent margin in terms of an average. So, Professor, uh, I, I yeah, got yeah. what the IOA does. What is what does IOA mean? IOA is considered. What, what, what's the IOA? What is the abbreviation for? Oh, index of agreement. Ah, okay. Oh. Index of uh, agreement. Oh, index of agreement. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we just, you right. know, forecasting model, you know, we are using the other uh, one. Sorry. Okay. Index so of agreement. correlational and bias. Yes. 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 So that's why it's the, uh, you know, easy to defend when you write a paper. So that's why. Okay. This is how, you know, Odin in Seoul, my, you know, home country still. My parents are living there. So I just set up, you know, same system set up in here. Um, some meteorology and previous, you know, days is some. And also uh, some uh, chemical concentration put in here. Some uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know forecast for the the uh, in the future and you know, ozone concentration and you know, by setting of GNN and definitely uh, during the training and period and all the you know waiting from input to uh, you know output and also between the you know different convolution layers all you know waiting is the uh, keep changing right so. After train them and then we just you know validate. Uh, this is in a y-axis axis again, and you can see the black color left return to the you know absorb the in ocean and the uh, red color is uh, the AI. Okay. But generally speaking, the AI is uh, can capture the very well the general terrain. Okay. But you can see the, the another thing. However, sometimes the in AI model cannot capture the high peak. Why? Because this is no wonder. This is no wonder for the you know, general, you know, the you know, machine learning. One of machine learning is a limitation, right? It trying to get the, the general. So in a high peak ozone just you know rarely occurred. So we only the for training only the two years data. So in order to you know captures, you know, we need to you know train the more longer year. That's how this you know long you know very high peak. Phenomena or event is not uh, like a rarely occurred anymore, or we need to do uh, some in you know, a specific so algorithm develop. So it looks like so, you're yeah. missing out on those really high peaks. Is that yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So yeah. that's why the uh, sometime later how we overcome this difficulty. Okay. So uh, this is Odin in Seoul is uh, during the daytime. The about like the during daytime actually. About in a ninety percent, you know, sometimes you know, ninety-five percent or something. And nighttime is, you know, lower. One of the reason is 
the, uh, the concentration of ozone during nighttime, almost no difference. So that's why the margin, some, you know, just scrub to extract the inform feature during the nighttime. Okay, and the, uh, I already mentioned that uh, you only use the very limited number of input, and then sometimes we cannot catch this, the uh, high peak of the you know, ozone. So we just, you know, tested what if, in addition to the uh, in situ, you know, measure, you know, input. Also, we are going to use the, uh, from the uh, some modeling, modeling uh, variable, such like a meteorological and the, uh, some uh, ozone precursor and actually consider some light and you know, chemistry. By doing so, and we, we think that even though this one is not, uh, you know, measured data, observed data, so uncertainty is a very high. However, however, we can put the, the uh, more number of variable to constrain the improve the you know model and result better. That's how you know we are trying to do. But it turns out it works. You know what that means the you know our deep learning machine, even though on what kind of uh, you know physical model you guys are using, sometimes the uh, very low quality you know accuracy in a physical model even though you are using, as long as that physical model has produced a consistent error, then AI in you know, a deep learning captures those kind of trends and uh, improve the result. I'm going to show, so you know, everything is just in the same, but only the you know, input data is so we put more, more diverse in the input, and uh, from the also model too, and then we are gonna do this exercise. Yeah, this is uh, you know, result, the, uh, you know, over the uh, United States. Actually, you guys can see this one is what? What that looks? This is, looks like America, right? This mm -hmm. is a map, okay? This Texas, Florida, or something. When I looked at this, uh, this is very neat, so that's why, oh, oh, this is red or something. But but anyway, in here, like a Western coast in Washington, and Oregon, California, you guys in here, okay? The first one is the, the AI performance in terms of IOA and the uh, below one in numerical model, evolution model CMAP. So about you know, 20 or 30 percent the, the uh, you know, ozone in accuracy improved, okay, in every year. But the problem in Washington and uh, almost, you know, both are uh, you know, very bad. I'm not quite sure why is that. My just one guess is the probably station in Washington somewhere some like the some observation data is not well you know kind of maintained or something or treated or but i don't know reason somehow the machine cannot you know capture the variability in washington in a state but all of the cities you can see always the you know significant you know enhanced accuracy so this one is ai this is a numerical model and this is model in a simulated ozone concentration x axis, the observation, observed the ozone concentration. So, one to one means the uh, this result is, you know, you know, become better. You can see that, like, a, this scatter fly is a lot, you know, broader. This one is more like the uh, near the, you know, one to one. And this one station, we just, you know, one station, and the, uh, we see that, the, you know, what happened, okay? For example, this black color represents the ozone, the, uh, the accuracy of the ozone. In here, many different like uh, stations. And the, uh, uh, this you know, colored one uh, from the AI model. So you can see the you know, model is like a 80% you know, range accuracy and about like a 10% in you know, increase, okay? And sometimes like a model is a 60%, that becomes like uh, you know you know higher than uh, 80 83 percent something what they miss about a 30 percent to enhance but this is a good why but still like a machine consider quality of the input right so in here is a model is so bad so that you know model the input quality there's a limitation if this cannot become a 90 above However, still like a 30%, you know, the margin we can have, and the model is good, and then about 10% of margin we are gonna have, okay? 
And yeah, and also uh, previously we cannot capture the high peak of the you know, ocean, but right now we are gonna have the you know you know more or less in a high peak except to the, the, this one. And this in the two we missed, and but the most time it will capture the, this one. Now the, the reason we have a collision, not only we are using more like a input and from the motor, and also uh, we are like to make a very distant like loss of function uh we just applied so we just you know self developed in you know, a loss function that's how in the make the you know uh, trying to make the system you know where it captures the high peak so that's why we're gonna have okay this is the same technology applied for the wolf model wolf is a weather forecasting model okay so this you know input and after setting up the dna and we train the model uh, based on you know you know observed you know meteorology like temperature, wind speed, or relative humidity, something like that, and then we just you know validate how that looks like. Uh, this is an example. It is, uh, in here, the green color represents the wolf, you know weather model, and the uh, uh, blue color represents the you know observation. Okay, most of the stations somehow this model. Is, is over predicted, okay? But this doesn't matter. Your model is over predicted, under predicted. Well, very good, doesn't really matter. Still, you have the margin, right? If your model is under predict, and then it's make it up and over predict, you know, make it down. That's how, you know, improve your model result, okay? So most of the time in AI can, if you apply AI, if you are very reasonable in you know, a wind field, you are gonna have and also, it's a, this is station 150. Look at this, that the uh, Wolf model is totally, totally wrong because this station is uh, like the, uh, you know, located in the uh, very small in island. So, and the, uh, you know, in the middle of an you know, island, you know, big mountain and also something. So, you know, ocean and mountain and this terrain is incredibly, like keep changing. That's why your model even cannot, you know, captures the trend in high and low, right? But in this case, the AI model is exactly like a correct to this pattern. What that means that this AI model not only, you know, reduce the mean bias, but also, you know, significantly enhance the correlation coefficient. From my like 20 years, like statistical model experience, many times statistical model is not an easy to you know, increase the correlation question. Many times it's easily do, we do like mean bias at all. So this is a one thing so we need to highlight. Okay, relative to why is about, you can see the 20% the, uh, in increase, okay? This is the same Big Island, uh, Hawaii, uh, the road community? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big Island, Hawaii. Uh, relative to Chimari, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, uh, I just, you know, summarize the, uh, my first section. Oh. And the, uh, the uh, like IOA learning were, and basically we have a validated trade model and we can improve accuracy of both, you know, put the point of CMAG and WAF model. Okay, I just go to the, in the second part, is uh, just in a fast, okay? Well, I don't think you have time, we, we have about an hour. Oh, you have time. Oh, you have time. Uh, yeah, we can take another ten minutes. Okay, okay. So this one is the uh, you know, remote sensing, and uh, and you guys are from the uh, NASA in you know, a center. So you know, most of you guys you know probably might have the uh, strong interest on the how can we do the remote sensing data. Many times, like from my experience, I have been using in many years the like uh, remote sensing data. One my big complaint is. You know, whenever we have the uh, cloud, then we cannot use the data. And it's very hard to validate for model and the, uh, apply for the, this data for the data simulation technique too. So, and uh, today I'm going to show how we can treat the missing data, you know, caused by the uh, cloud. And uh, by using the um, AI technique, and also once you have the old the field of data, then how, you know, we can forecast to do like the uh, what happened 
you know, using the uh, through the uh, image forecasting. For example, one of my friends during the night time, many times, there is no any remote sensing data. But that's why, but if you do image you know, forecasting, we can do, and then during the even night time, we don't need to worry about. You know, we can forecast how that air mass, you know, moves all around until the, uh, you know, next morning, the another sun comes up and we are going to get the another you know, data set, okay? So this is a kind of a, uh, you know, missing data three months. I already mentioned that, you know, so a lot of satellite measurements can be used to extract the surface, you know, level, you know, air pollution. However, again, with that many times, the uh, remote sensing data, this is one example from like a OC, geostationary remote sensing. They measure aerosol optical depth. Basically, how much the aerosol from the column. And uh, you can see that like, we really wanna, what's going on in here in Seoul, in Korea, but many times, like uh, there's uh, no data. So due to a uh, clone. So uh, traditionally, and uh, we are using some uh, cleaching methods. Basically, cleaching method is if you have uh, one image, and then, and by considering the distance of all other like observation site and concentration, and that you determine what would be, okay? But one like a limitation, you know, what a well-known and limitation of cleaching is, this is, for example, in a real observation, and this is in a mask, mask shape. What it means, uh, this is the cloud. Cloud looks like. A cloud can be more like worse than this one, sometimes it's better than this, I don't know. But this is, I just asked the students, randomly make this cloud like this. And then by using cleaning, and then you're gonna have the, this result. You can see some, if you use a cleaning, sometimes it's kind of blocking, okay? If you have the many data miss. So that's why I just briefly just explain. So, you know, we are using, I just asked the, you know, partial convolution neural network the students apply this, like the you know, technique for a commercial, okay? Apply to the, uh, this, like uh, this remote sensing data, okay? So, partial convolution neural network, what we do is many, 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 like a number, billions of millions of image data, they just, by using that image data, they just, you know, like, um, you know, train. And then, you know, you know, by, by using this method, and you can like get into this kind of a thing. So this in the insect and in a house, sometimes the uh, lady or something, and the uh, older in a face, we cover it like this. Of course, this is not an exact answer. However, more or less, looks like this, okay? And the, uh, you know, this part, you know, also too. So uh, this is how that works. A little bit more like how that this methodology works. And the missing data, the, you have the original mask like this, and then you know, and uh, first you know, the convolution. This is the first layer is actually mask that reduce. Whatever the, this is all in you know, no data, and here is uh, some data. Okay, whatever you have the data, and you know, from here in you know, a neighboring area, and then you are going to have to remove to that. In a part, in a layer first, layer second, layer is third, and that's how the this mask removed, and that's how we are gonna have the full imaging. The reason to how this is work because this cloud, you know, you know, doesn't look like this all the time. The shape of clouds will keep changing. So we just trade many many years, and then this this in a in a AI machine understand the, how that looks like and around the regions, okay? So this is a result. So cleaning in here, again, like this kind of blocking in here, and then partial convolution neural network, this kind of, you know, cloud, you are gonna have this one. So we don't have the any blocking. What that means, we have a more less risky, you know, data we can, you know, extract using this methodology. And this is a two worst scenario. And I ask the students, and why don't you do it? like all the like high peaks, like you know, covered by a cloud, and then what would happen? And then you can see that, of course, you know, the accuracy becomes lower than other case. But however, still like the 
you know, some you know high values and those kind of uh, extracted, and also this original and like this, and you're gonna this. And also, uh, we are not, you know, trained many, many you know, long, long years in at all. So this is just a preliminary research. And we just, in a few years, you know, training, we can have this DNA accuracy, okay? So this is, a, you know, another, another way to, you know, benefit uh, compared with the uh, traditional method of cleansing. And in here, the, uh, the correlation coefficients and uh, for uh, partial convolution and cleansing. So you can have the like this. So what that means is the most of the time that we can have the stabilized data. Okay, consistent data we can have. So left hand side is a larger. And uh, this one is a mean in a absolute error wise. Root to mean F and uh, mean absolute error, you're gonna have and you're gonna have like this. So in this case, a low is a better. So our uh, partial convolution case is lower than the other. Okay? So another big benefit is if we use the uh, traditional method, and then for each image, it takes 20 minutes for cleaning, for example, and then one million images you need to deal with them, and one million times 20 minutes. It takes forever, never ends. However, if you use a partial convolution neural network, and the first time some training time you need, and you optimize that and a training algorithm and system and a five, five hour training, and then almost in no time. So we can do even deal with the million of a million like an image we can deal with. So you guys, you know, Big data of the remote sensing, so now this is methodology. And also, once we have all the missing data, it's a film that we can do based on this one, so we can do like image in a focus. I don't know, you know who, who else called this one, and I just call like image focusing. And, and uh, but anyway, so it's about image focusing using advanced neural network. The, and here is the illness, this is a hurricane. So for example, in a hurricane illness, you know, whatever that is, this big air mass is moves, okay? So how they moves, you know? My survey illness go like this, oh, here is the high pressure and low pressure, and I feel like the barrier, right? So that's how when it goes this way, that way, like this. So there is some regularity, and this guy's air mass is smart enough to you know where the you know next you know step goes so those kind of you know pattern we're gonna learn using machine learning we can forecast you know this kind of thing okay this is a one exercise this is a not you know very you know comfortable you know if i don't call it at all and i just you know one day ask them then why don't you make a very simple light in a boundary you are gonna make it and then how you're like a 2d cnn uh, to the uh, conversion neural network, how they, you know, focus like this. And uh, sooner or later, very quickly, they follow that and how they go, okay? And then, you know, you know from the next, and right now is a two LMS. Sometimes big two, you know, LMS, they hit, collide each other, and this kind of low end, high pressure barrier or frontal system or something, and then I'm trying to the, uh, let them know, you know, how that, okay? A little bit, you know, complicated code when we can, this one is also easily done. By doing like this, and then two and three, four, five, something like that, and more like, you know, complicate, like a situation more or less and close to the, uh, you know, occurred in modern nature. And then we just keep training. Yeah? So uh, that's how we just apply the you know, AOD, you know, aerosol optical depth, you know, by using two CN, and this is observation, and then this is a predict. So basically in here is not that much. You know, we do, we only do like a three months of training, okay? Probably if you do a, a three year or 30 years, you know, training do definitely this accuracy becoming higher and higher. This is a just, you know, in a simple, you know, test, you know, how that and for as a demo, okay? So about like a three months training and you can do like a previous, you know, three hour, like a history and you can focus in a three image like a feature, okay? So, but one good thing is it doesn't take any that much time. So in you know, almost real time, we can focus, okay? Um, this is, you know, how they, you know, fly to do like image focusing. 
what kind of input data we need? And the first one is, you know, in a 2D, like all different kind of satellite data. Of course, like, you know, many different, you know, you know satellite data, right? So that's why uh, we are using very big database, you know, we set up that uh, without the, uh, with, you know, not using a database, you only just, you know, you know read the file and HDF file or something, then uh, it takes uh, you know, a lot of time you know, for the, uh, your AI programming to read the data or something. So we just you know, automatically, the, uh, you know, to our you know, big data in database that are collected all available all, all, all like a satellite data, you know, to the satellite and you know, put it together. And also, you know, where the map, we understand the physics and how that works, okay? So, and dynamic model is a helpful tool, okay, even though if there is available and something like that. And then this, you know, also this kind of image, cloud image or something. And then we are gonna, you know, forecast the, in a hurricane. This is a one one example. Actually, this is not a very comprehensive the result at all. This one is a one of a, like a symbolize the you know, ensemble type of model. The uh, red color is the uh, National Hurricane Center. You know, the uh, forecasting for Hurricane Harvey. Actually, this one hit the my in a hometown. So my many many you know, neighbors like at the time the flood it. And uh, that's why I decided, you know, you know, to set up the, you know, this system. And next morning, and I just set up the you know, hurricane forecasting system, and we do this is a just free learning result. And the uh, um, there's a hurricane center there using 50 different like uh, statistical model, dynamic model, all different model, and very customized technique. But we only use the just a few of like a dynamic model they are using. You know this. You know that's all you said. And then by using some like a uh, uh, ensemble AI, the uh, we just you know catch it. You know how then uh, this trajectory changes every six hour, next three days how that goes. So we just uh, compare them. We about like about like twenty percent, you know, on a range in accuracy we show. Even though we use the you know less less number of the input we are gonna use. So. This kind of you know, you know, you one through four data can be applied to many different. If, if this one is successfully working on, and then you know, missing data we don't need to worry about, and also you know, all different kind of uh, like during the night time or something, you know, we don't need to worry about neither. So I just close my talk, and we just. Demonstrate to this CNN ability to uh, accurately the uh, input, the uh, refute the missing data of AOD, and also accurate focus uh, in uh, the entire AOD image. Definitely, this kind of uh, image focusing based on 2D CNN can be in a track the satellite image and hurricane. And also, uh, not only the AI technique, but also right now, we just kind of uh, implement the is numerical, like data simulation, you know, tackling together. And uh, very interestingly, they have, uh, you know, one is the data simulation is trying to, you know, expect, forecast what's going on based on a uh, uh, probable density distribution, right? Probability. And AI is severely like empirically in you know, a track. So two different characteristic actually consequently if we use, and still you have a lot of improvement you can see. Okay, I just, you know, one, and also um, other you know tackling might be this AI uh, AI, AI can be uh, uh, offline for the um, data simulation technique because data simulation uh, people probably outside so that's how we can save a lot of time because data simulation takes quite you know long time you know so that's why we can apply like this and also um, we can. Many different uh, ways to we apply right now, like not only weather, you know, air pollutants and pollen forecasting, climate change, and also, uh, you know, you know, knowing uh, tomorrow weather, more accurate weather is uh, very important for uh, 
power company to decide uh, what kind of you know electricity needed for the tomorrow and also um also we are using some cloning we just cloning model whatever you have the uh, physical model you are using today you can clone the model so what that means the once the you know if you clone the model it won't take any time so uh, you know also i know that in one or two in a uh, NOAA center and uh, they also like uh, started working on this one and uh, successfully calculate radiative transfer some value you know by using machine learning about like a 98 or 90 90 99% range and we also we clone to the weather model and you know sometimes the air pollution model like 95 you know to uh, 100 range so we can make a clone model too so once the, we have the clone model and then you can do in theory you can do like a billion over million times of sensitivity tests you can do so this is a totally different game than what you have today okay i just want to conclude this one i have no idea outside audience what kind of background you guys have as i can do i all talking about those things i'm going to get to your question outside and inside okay. thank you